Team WE come in favorites. Certainly seed-wise they do. Yep. But yesterday, you're going to have to try and write it off and show us a new WE, Rusty, because uh, that was questionable. Yeah, it's almost like you've forgotten that J-Team almost perfect game. Oh, EDG I haven't forgotten. Yesterday. It's blind faith, Atlas. <laughs> it's blind faith. Well, J-Team are actually going to throw WE a bone. They're going to ban out the Cogmore this time, so they don't need to dismantle that. And it's going to be Elise and Thresh to start off the champion select here for J-Team versus WE. You wonder how priority Callista will be, because Callista Rakan, certainly for the Korean teams, was the gold standard of a bot lane. But the moment you start banning further AD carries than Caitlyn, something, something is so likely to slip through. In this case, the Rek'Sai is one of the big picks that is available at first pick. But some teams look elsewhere, and they're just happy to grab Gragas at first pick for JT. And this is super fair for me, right? Taking it from Condi, but as you mentioned, you have to recognize what can be picked in response to that Gragas being there. The Grexai as a natural pick, if you want to go towards that. Hard Farmers in Nidalee still exist on Summoner's Rift as well. Yeah, so Callista is going to be locked in here, though, for WE. They could go for the Rakan for zero once again. No need to pick up a jungler just yet, but it is going to be the Braum. And that's what the desk was talking about. Get zero under that comfort. And I think the desk also, you know, when they're talking about the bot lane matchup, BB and J kind of got a free pass with the Caitlyn lane and their big win over EDG to play the PB, to focus on pushing the lane. Team WE can go lane focused. It's not Callista Rakan, but it is Callista Braum. So they do have a lot of options in the bottom. And also level one. This is a fearsome duo at level one, whether it's in lane or as a four-man invade to try and get first blood. Yeah, it's going to be the Ash and the Tom Kench, though, to start things off. So Tom Kench just to try and disengage from anything. Of course, Fofo and Morning yet to take their champions, and we'll see what they're going to be grabbing here. But Condi is considering the Lee Sin once again, and this is flooding back the memories. And you got to say, we somehow, in a match between Alex and Condi, stayed away from the Rengar. No Rengar is in this game. Thank I God. know, Rusty, <laughs> you're going to be happy to see that. Rengar was certainly disseminated by SKT yesterday. Going into the second round of the draft, first ban is that Cassie. And of course, with the Lee Sin being picked by Condi, it's something you're just more excited to see sure. him on. The reason he's known as the son of Baron, you know, being able to steal things. Oh, yeah. Lee Sin very good at taking away objectives, controlling objectives, and being aggressive, which is what we want. And it was also what Alex was able to dismantle EDG on as well. So he'd already picked up his jungler. However, still a denial pick as the Kled is going to be the follow-up ban here on the side of J-Team. Focusing 957 towards the top lane. And we were all watching that miraculous Kled escape. 957, of course, a deft hand, a deft hand on the old Kled. Now, WE are going to have to first pick and blind pick a solo lane. Probably going to have to be the... Renekton if it's going to be a top lane pick or something like the Corky yeah. for a mid lane pick. I feel like those are the two obvious ones. Corky, if they want a last pick top lane, they do want the counter pick, they just blind pick the Corky. And so naturally your response will be the Talia. Very similar play patterns when they roam around the map. Think of the package and the ultimate that can come out. Slightly different in how they're executed, but it does seem like the natural response. Yeah, Something like the Cassiopeia that we saw yesterday is banned away. I feel like Lucian is actually a really good laning matchup into the Corky, but he's going to be moved past me. Makes sense. The LMS does highly prioritize the Talia for the early pressure. And you mentioned that Jarvan, it's picked, but there is a natural counter available. Yeah, the, and the Renekton is going to be picked up straight away. So those are going to be your team compositions. A lot of terrain to be created by the J team at this point in time. And we'll see whether they're going to be able to utilize that. But the Corky is something that we didn't mention earlier on. Both of these players actually having phenomenal performances earlier on in the tournament. And Shea is going to once again be on that here for WE. I think both of them in defeats as well, and amazingly yeah. they are able to look good in those moments, and that does speak a lot towards the players individually. Fofo, star player on the team, honestly. I'll still be looking towards Alex, but we do have those full team compositions, and I'd be afraid if I was LPL, just based off what J-Team's throwing at you, and there is a lot of terrain and a lot of movements <laughs> around the map. There's some pressure lane matchups for WE, though. They do have the Renekton, who has the natural advantage over the Jarvan. Kusta Braum versus Ash and Tom Kench can go and go both ways. I actually lean towards the Callista lane. And then Corky can have great trades against Talia. So we've already said three lanes that are looking good on paper. That's what the play pattern is from J-Team. Because you kind of need Morning and his jungler to really come up and babysit them through a tough phase. Yeah, and part of the, the problem with the LPL was the want to go towards this hyperscaling composition gone situation. And it's yep. definitely gone. You've got Renekton's, you've got the Corkies, the ultra item spiking Corky there who can just get spikes everywhere. And look, the two item spike of the Callista has always been something we've spoken about. So 
will be able to get things done in the early game. It's just whether or not they can. And I'm looking at Condi. Can he get around the map and start things up? It's the two shades of Team WE that you can get. It's the early oh. game aggression or the late game hyperscaling. And we have seen a pretty nice middle ground, honestly, here, where they do still have that early pressure. But you know what? Three items, four items is fantastic. For and them. the awesome thing about the format that we have today is the performances from both the teams, the drafts, will inform which team they decide to throw in for the next series. There's a lot to be hyped about here in terms of the direction they go because we have a game one meta. It is WE returning to their roots from MSI and picking for lane. But if something goes awry, if we learn something about style, all the teams of the four on each side have very defined styles, and it will inform us going forward. Yeah, WE as well want to find some redemption after their 0-2 on day one as well. Of course, their matchup's very, very difficult. However, we are onto Summoner's Rift, and that redemption, the opportunity is right now. As their team comp looks good, of course, J-Team looking okay as well, but it's not the same situation that they had last time around. Java and Oriana, pretty easy to run. Caitlyn, pretty easy to run. It was a flawless performance strategically, but can they make this pick and movement style composition work out for them? Because it feels like it's a little bit more difficult and more elusive to uh, execute. And it just feels like the LPL and also Europe have been finding out in their regional battles that you have to go early, that you have to focus mm -hmm. on the lane kingdom. You can't opt out of it yeah. and hope for the early game comp to make mistakes and allow you to get the scaling on. Gone is the first rotation, Cogmore. A lot more respect. Yeah. Now, actually, putting all the theory to practice is what we're looking for from WE. And of course, with junglers, it's being that much more important right now. If you don't win your lanes, then your junglers will lose the 1v1. That means there goes your Rift Herald, there goes your Drake, whatever it ends up becoming. And slowly through that, especially with the Herald being able to take out an entire turret, pretty much, with some pressure behind it, snowballs happen earlier. And it is important that WE and J-Team look towards the early game laning. Yeah, I like how you, you say start off early and they've started trading before they've even got to the minion waves, which works out quite nicely. The hard leash on blue side for a red side start is very, very common for teams. And then you have Callista Braun where if you face check, if there isn't a ward there, it could be first blood just having them rotate to lane. So I like the adaptation coming through. Speaking of adaptation, I'm actually surprised to see Morning Going, not going for the grasp on the Javan, but actually going for Fervor, which tells me, get a quick gank up there, all in, and level two, level three, the damage output's gonna be that much higher from the Javan. Not to mention that, but he's also got that Corrupting Potion as well, and going for these aggressive trades early on, almost made Renekton look like not a great level one champion, although that is gonna even itself out. Of course, has the W at level one as well, so the trading patterns there is, as it starts in the Rift is very easy for him to actually just equalize those trades. Fervor of Battle, kind of is curious to me. I still would have preferred the grass just to sustain through what a Renekton has, but it does mean that if you have crowd control, you're right. It's got higher kill pressure. And I, I, I really do share your healthy skepticism because sure, Jarvan, a lot of his trade patterns are all in, but in lane, he kind of Q autos and then walks away. If he EQs in aggressively, tries to get full value out of Fervor, yeah. Dominus has popped post level six and you almost always lose the trade. So it, to me, it suggests early gank, early pressure around top side. Otherwise, there are better options options for the job. Which is actually super curious when you've watched Morning's play patterns in his last two games that he's played. It's super defensive. He went for a Spectre's Cal Renekton trying to not die. He had Fervor that game as well, so maybe he just likes <laughs> to make things look good in terms of the keystones. Like, no guys, I'm going to pressure, and then just yeah, chills back. That's actually fair. Build keystones for damage, build defensive to survive. <sighs> what to say, what to say. Building <laughs> defensive does make, it makes sense that you'd survive then afterwards. I'm curious to see uh, Condi moving to a different camp there before taking the red. So he heads up towards the Krugs and then will take his red down. Now to move off with a full duration of this red buff to try and get things going here in the early game. And does that mean that he will be trying to get aggressive? What, what's, uh, what's that telling Certainly you? Certainly looks like it. He's got the turbo level four. Wait for 957. Where's the stun? Interrupts. That's going to come in there as he does get the knockup. Morning taking a lot of damage and the red buff will tick down. But Morning will just use that teleport theoretically to get back into that lane after he heads back to base and does look like he's going to do that. So not going to quite get it. No flashes there either from Condi. We usually don't see the full clear of top side because then it's a free invitation now for J-Team to invade, get vision bot side. And vision-wise, which certainly was the story for both teams yesterday against WE, was the vision supremacy over them. So just cementing their wards for me is a, a big thing I want to see. The draft, they've made the adaptations there, but bringing in zero, losing Ben, their vision control was desperately poor. 
during both their games yesterday. Which is important to note because Alex, once again, was a high priority vision jungler. Sure. He was really trying to find, especially in the Samsung game, I believe it was, where his opponents were at all times. You I mean, can see it on your screen. Yeah, right, they, had, they had that information, and that's the, the takeaway here is that while the damage trade went good for WE, the information trade, predictably, is on the side of the elements. Yeah, massive warding. And it's exactly what you just said, predictably, because WE were not doing a heck of a lot of warding. We heard a lot of talk about it. And so far, not a lot of vision on the map here for the red side team. So probably keep your eyes open for what WE can see, because that change will be very, very important as we move forward. What to me is actually very curious is when you watch the minimap and you'll see question mark pings placed at jungle camps as if they know exactly where he is, even without that vision. Because you get one ward, you see exactly where he is, you know where he has to go next. There's and only a certain amount of camps alive. And it's one of the reasons why Ash has been so high priority ever since standard meta cemented itself as the only way to play League of Legends. Because you get information about one camp, you can, you're allowed to walk in, and you spoke about Alex and his vision tendencies. It's not about contesting the camp here, it's much more about keeping complete tabs on Condi. Well, they definitely know where he is. So they just sort of waved at each other as Alex is going to move back into his own jungle. Only the Gromp available here. He's going to wander over a ward. So the jungle is not necessarily a uh, secret mission for either of them as Condi's going to walk over a ward himself. Like Mission Impossible version of secret, I guess. Yeah. Or impossible to be secret, something like that, <laughs> as Jay is going to devour his ash, spit BB back. Okay, so far this bottom lane is going relatively even. It's only a couple of CS in the lead for Mystic. And for a Callista lane to be even with the Ash, you'd have to be feeling okay as an Ash. I think the major point that we'll be looking towards is actually around the Lee Sin who got the experience and CS advantage. Remember, he had the first full clear that was uncontested. Mm -hmm. And Alex, yes, you can place the vision, you can find him, but sooner or later, Condi slips through the cracks, gets that one gank off with his level advantage. And even in the 2v2, you then argue towards their favor. Yeah, very fast level six. The lane ward will spot the Lee Sin coming through. That doesn't mean necessarily that this particular play is over. Gragas on the bottom side of the map, so gonna be looking towards the enemy blue buff. Too early for a Mountain Drake start, and this could, be, could just be the steal for JT. Well, it's all too easy here as well. No knowledge, really, but they are pinging him out. So there, there was a ward near that uh, blue buff. Looks to me like they're back. just pressuring him off the turret in the top lane, I suppose. But it's very obvious, even though Condi doesn't know he's on the ward, by the way, Morning is playing, that he's been spotted. You can see immediately the be careful pings the wards down on the bottom side of the map by WE. The blue buff that was taken away. They know all of this information. It's just they can do nothing with it. Whoa, there's the flash actually. Q's gonna land. The kick was there, but Morning's just gonna flag and drag his way out. That in fact cancelled the Dragon Rage. So just no ability to kill this job, and he still has his flash. Insane that he lives through that. He had the right read. It was one of those weird scenarios as a jungler where you're like, well, even if he had a ward, I've been here so long, there's a chance that he'll actually finally walk up and contest the minion wave. Did walk up, still wasn't answered. Condi escapes with just a blue buff contest, but WE have enough reinforcements. There should be a trade of blues, and crucially, WE will actually pick up one on their mid laner, whereas Fofo only relying on the lost chapter. Okay, so we'll see whether Fofo can equalize that one out. Does have the slightly less good double rings in his back pocket, but it's the Sheen pickup for Shie avoiding something like a Hex Drink or something more defensive to start, to start things off. And we'll see whether this Trinity Force is going to be in at a good clip. And didn't even go towards the Phage part of the Trinity Force for extra health, yeah. a bit of extra AD. It's all about weaving through the ultimate as well and getting the auto attacks off. Higher burst immediately, less consistent damage usually, unless you get the rockets to hit. I think the play pattern of the fact that you can walk up to a Talia, especially when her ground just worked for wave clear, Q auto, and then yeah. just... Uh, just disengage, you often do win trades pretty hard as Corky. It's why I do favor him compared to the uh, Talia, especially in the early lane phase. And Trinity mm -hmm. Force Spike will, I'm sure, return and talk about in just a little bit. WE have walked through the enemy jungle. Okay, Mystic is going to be spotted here as well. Ward is not going to get discovered. As, yeah, it's just going to be Vision being put down. And everyone seems to know exactly what's going on, especially Absolutely. J Team. Just seem to have the number of WE. This is a battle of all the right wards in all the right places as yeah. well. It's not actually like littered with vision everywhere. Most of the wards are placed correctly and in the right places, so they're not overbuying wards. I'm looking at KT when I say something like that. Ah, uh, yes, Marta, the king of purchasing wards. I mean, both teams are playing respectful. It's kind of my takeaway here the draft, the playstyle, the focus on vision, the little advantages incrementally crept up because of seeing the enemy jungler. 
It's all been pretty ordered so far, but all that means is kind of free farm on both sides, no gold lead. WE, they do have the one and two item spike advantage with the Corky and the Callista both excelling in that range. So I'm going to really focus on WE, taking what has definitely been a solid early game and translating to that, that to the mid game in about another five minutes time. And do they need to do that? Is, is their composition going to fall off way too much against what J-Team have in their arsenal? Because I'm looking at J-Team's comp and feeling like, well, it's still probably going to be a type of composition that's going to be relatively similar to what WE put together. I mean, I still look at WE's comp and say they'd scale extremely well into the late game. Uh, when you've got a Corky in the middle lane, the more items you get, the better you're going to be. And you're a second AD carry, right? The more AD carries you have. Naturally, you look at a composition and say it still scales. There's always going to be that scaling. Even with J-Team, when you look at their five-man roster, Talia ultimate, Tom Kench ultimate aren't really damage ults either. So yep. their early spikes at six are more meaningful for plays, for objectives, or for turrets. Uh, so they are playing playing it slow and respectful until they get that big opportunity. Well, no opportunities presenting themselves just yet. The Rift Herald is at least being scouted out by Condi, but not started up at all. Mountain Drake, of course, will be something coveted by both of these teams, especially talking about double there 80 carries. There's the Abyssal Void, the first one to come in. Cataclysm just going to be sliced out of as 957 wants the extra hell. He does. In. Yeah, Condi's going to be able to get that kick. Good knockup comes in as Alex. Just too much Ooh. damage. First blood from the Dominus. Comes out of 957 who's got the fancy Still footwork. Going. Yeah, that's going to be Morning falling down as well. So already the trade. A win here for WE and it's a double kill for Fofo here as he zero. answers. But is he going to be okay? Good Devour and Jay flashes out of the ultimate. And it is going to be Talia surviving. So two for two. Man, this game's close. And even though J-Team rotated first, WE got the first blood when even even with the later roam coming through from zero and should be feel really good about that whole passage of play transpired. Only big factor to talk about on the side of J-Team was that Fofo picked up both the kills. You mentioned that his ultimate's all about the mobility. He'll have the itemization to yeah. get over that particular hump. So that's the only thing J-Team can really smile about. Because usually the first person who rotates first picks up the big advantages, and that did not happen. And of course, when you want someone on your team to have the kills if you were J-Team, it would still be Fofo, the big player on their, on their roster. And on the opposite side, 957, not exactly the star player, but you give him momentum, you give him an iron, and he still performs extremely well with that goal, with that money, and he's in the winning lane. Having a CS advantage, having extra gold over a Java will only extend the period of time where Renekton can just play as you see, take advantageous trades, ignore minion damage, and still trade up with the stain on the call of the Meek. So that's why I really do favor here. WE in the mid game. Is he walking up? Yeah, Condi is going to kite that blue buff back, and it looks like Zero is here to help. So it should be A OK, -okay, especially with Mystic waiting in the wings, ready to Fate's call this Braum to safety. GA just says. Yeah, I did all of that work. Picks up that blue buff for himself and now has his Sorcerer Shoes. So very close to the Trinity Force and we'll have that big item spike to start things off. And just to cement why I really do favor WE's draft, it feels like they bridge between spikes super well. Corky one item, then to Callista two item. These are pretty much preeminent one and two item spikes spikes in the whole game among any champions. Top lane, well, 957's in trouble. Yep, Seismic Shove hasn't even been used yet. There's the flash and 957 is going to go down and make that three kills for Fofo. Been talking about this guy be the carry for this team all weekend long. And man, he's definitely demonstrating that now with 100% of his team's kills. He certainly is, of course. 957 caught in a very awkward spot to use his slice and dice. Went into the turret just because of the Cataclysm rocks as well blocking him in. So they do well to pick him up. They do well to use the Java and Ultimate meaningfully and save everything from Talia as these two are still going out of bottom. Optimism to use the Flash when the Cataclysm was still available was certainly not going to be getting away in no. that, that particular regard. So it would have been nice to have that for the next engagement. Would have been about a one and a half minute window where Jarvan was still flashless. So that's the only small question mark you'd raise about 957. Yeah, teleport actually going to be used from 957 as well to get himself back to this lane as the arrow flies out on the bottom Talia's side. Here. Fate's call is going to come in. Yeah, Weave as well. As well, Zero throws down a defensive glacial zoning. fissure. Zoning. Yeah, zoning fissure. I At like least it. it was legitimately zoning this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like the zoning hemo plague. No, not quite the zoning hemo plague. It applied enough of a slow. So they do get out of life. Considering it was just the Talia, they don't teleport down to the bottom lane. There was a really good teleport ward for JTM, and I am shocked that Morning was not in a position to actually come down there. That would have been kills. Well, see where the next time it's going to work out. But Fofo, I do like the idea. And Condi's going to move in towards the top side. So Morning saying, I don't want these creeps. She is going to make it a three versus one, though. Yeah. Up. 
This is a big problem. Alex is there. Condi takes half of his health in damage, but look at Shea. He's got a lot to work with. Boss Bomb Auto, like you were talking about. The Q Auto Trades working out. It's half the health bar of Morning, but he is still going to survive. Yeah, no ultimate from Morning with reinforcements coming up. The Weaver's Wall down. Oh, it's not in the right spot, so it ends up just being a bit of pressure exuded, turret damage exuded by WE, but no more. And they're not going to lose too much here either, so WE utilizing the extra push that you're going to have out of that Kolki, able to shove that wave towards that turret, especially with the absence of a Talia. And I think that's the key phrase here as well. You mentioned this during just the draft as we were getting in. They've got the pushing waves. They're using those pushing waves. And naturally, for WE, that's exactly what they need to be successful. Not often do you get the pushing lane and also the one item into two, two item power spike yeah. supremacy over your opponent. That's why you look at WE, you smile, because you say, okay, the draft works, the item builds work, all the champions are in the meta. They've been solid with their warding, the game could still go crazy on me. There still could be a fatal mistake, but at least you can see they watched the VODs, they listened to the consensus of the other coaches, and they learned and, they learned and yep. made adjustments. Not many teams can make this much of an adjustment in one day, in less than a day. This is less than 24 hours later, and that part is good to see from WWE. That's what makes Rift Rivals so exciting, because again, they're the top four teams from every region. If any team within their region should be adapting, it would be these four, so it is nice to see. And maybe there wasn't a brain's trust coming into the first day. There's no guarantee that all the coaches with world's implications in the future come together and want to play together. But at some point, you're going 0-4, largely against LMS teams, and you're thinking, no, we will be in the final. It will be China versus Korea, like most people would have expected. And WE, who knows where the information is coming from? Maybe it's from them, maybe it's from other coaches. They're looking a lot better. Yeah. They're looking to take themselves a Rift Herald as well. I do not know. see that. There we go. Yeah, there he is. Pretty sure they know, <laughs> especially with the fact that uh, uh, she ate moved up towards that Rift Herald. He was hit. actually and out was of vision up, as was well. He for, yeah, he didn't right. get spotted. I mean, J, -team, J Team has no interest in walking up there. They can't take umbrage. They don't have vision on the top side of the jungle. All their vision is bottom side. That's why they're playing Fofo. bottom side. But yeah, they're go. just taking everything. They've got first brick as well as the Rift Herald, and now the <laughs> shutdown gold onto Mystic. Yeah, everything And now look what's out. happening in the mid lane. They've got the Herald conveniently here that they just took for themselves. The pick it's like could a not have been show. timed better. This is the one we prepared earlier. Oh, you would have said that about J-Team yesterday, Atlas. So the yeah. fact that we're saying it about WE in this game is such a change from yesterday. No backdoor bonus, able to take down the turret in the mid lane. They keep pushing and the, the map's looking more and more narrow for JT. Yeah, they're able to get another charge onto this turret as well, oh. as that big one did a lot of damage to all three members of J-Team, defending under this turret valiantly. WE moved back, but that is a very quick two turrets, Rift Herald, as well as the kill on the stacked up member of JT. And you could see Condi was playing with confidence. He canceled the resonating strike with just a W being like, no, I'm not going to go in on this one. He's playing the mind games. Couldn't play mind games yesterday. That's how far behind WE were. But they're trying to get in the head of J-Team, and so far, it's a success. Certainly right. And when you've got your Trinity Force, Sorcerer's Shoes, Power Spike for the Corky, you've got your Blade of the Ruin King for the Callista. There's no better timing to make the plays that they were just then. So things work out nicely for them. On the side of J-Team, they still need to work around Fofo just that little bit more. If he's getting three main ganks, is he overextended or is the vision not in place this time? And was this the one lapse in their really strong vision control? Yeah, and you also, as a Talia, you're the one that wants to be moving around and making those plays. You're, if you're getting caught out like this, not only are you getting caught, and that's definitely bad, but also you're not utilizing your strength, which is being able to roam around the map and catch your opponent off guard. It's they hard. need to be making these proactive plays. It's hard to finger wave too much at the Talia for me, when there's no mid lane priority on either side, the jungler needs to be helping you out to support. Or Mystic. Could be helping you out. Okay, bot lane is looking like a bit of a quandary. Is it a, g a bait though, Papa Smithy? Is uh, yes. Condi's going to be able to grab that <laughs> kill? <laughs> Sometimes you can answer your own questions, Atlas. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it was awkward because I was like preparing that sentence and then uh, it just, just happened. So never mind. Mystic is going to be able to grab that. Looking for his Hurricane next. It has his Ninja Tabi as well as that. Blade of the Ruin King, but he is getting accelerated. 101 now does have parity as far as CS as BB's moving up here towards the top side of the map. We'll be able to take down this top outer turret relatively easily if these minions are going to last. Plus 957 has something to do with it. And Zero, of course, is nearby. So the turret should stand for this wave. The question is what happens in the next ones. The jungler is bottom, which is why you'd suspect that maybe if WE want to, they can hold this but they haven't got Corky, they haven't got Lee Sin, it's unlikely. JTM also have a lot more vision. They have two wards in the enemy red side and a control ward defensively, whereas WE are only playing with who's showing in minion waves. 
on the side of J-Team. So less information means that Alex can actually walk up pretty confidently and Condi and Mystic are cancelling more autos and auto spacing backwards more than they'd like. Yeah, Morning is also going to turn Alex up. Alex is going. I mean. Yep. Uh, okay, okay. Oh, that's awkward. Condi is going to kick his way back in, avoids the knock up there, but he's still going to die. And Fofo is going to be able to take down Mystic all too easily. J-Team striking back nicely. Not quite on the gold front just yet, but still looking good. And if they take down that top out of turret, that is going to bring us all back to square. And I know you may look at that and say, what was Condi thinking? But Fofo was the difference. He actually shows up this time. As they've also got themselves a Shie. Yep, the exhaust is going to come in. Good uh, smite to save Alex's life for the moment. And it is going to do it. Fofo picks up the kill. And Alex, that passage of play was making him look pretty good. And Rusty, I wondered how long WE could keep on this vision <laughs> train, because you know these teams from the LPL. At some point, they want to start buying long swords, cloth armors, and no control wards. While J-Team were making that measured push around top, we mentioned, well, WE, they don't really have the vision to make things happen. Consider that they don't see at any point Fofo coming. They don't have information on it. They don't have a control ward up at the enemy red. That's why both of them die, overextending, take the turret. Gragas missed a damn cask. It was a party cask in the bot lane, but the party was cemented by a double kill, became a triple kill, and J-Team, they've got back control of the game. They certainly do, and from this point, just by getting those kills and how they coincide with the map control, whilst they don't break that top turret, it's infinitely easier as you go to your next pushes. You get extra vision. Oh, boy. Oh, Ooh. man, that arrow. It went up the wall. I, I'd never seen the trajectory change on an arrow that much, but that it is going to get a, the flash. Uh, classic 3.5 second stun there, so smart oh, flash yeah. coming through from Mystic. The best Ash players do thread them through terrain to reduce the time to react and... BB's another one of these Season 1 Ash players, Atlas, so we shouldn't be surprised. Exactly right. Of course, Ash been around for the length of League of Legends just in general, so BB being an incredibly uh, seasoned player. Will he, will he weave in the uh, thorn mail at some point? Oh, I was hoping someone <laughs> would say that. <laughs> Tutorial style. Oh, the is going for the melee uh, corky maneuver. Packages style. his way out. Porn yeah. patented. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, he still only plays that style of Corky. <laughs> I think that they thought that, you know, how they, his attack range was lowered just uh, just a little bit. He thought, well, oh, it, got, it yeah. got lowered. It must be just melee. <laughs> it was more the posture. Oh, they got the kick. So that is going to be the kick. Doesn't get him over the wall. Good flash from Jay, but it is still going to be the summoner spell gained from Condi. This is awkward. WE opting into Ooh, fights caskets. against the Callista. Yeah, exhaust down onto Condi there as well. He's not going to last long as that's going to be the kill. BB picks that one up and now 957. They are free to just focus down the crocodile, but is he that what one. they want? He just picks up Mystic, flashes his way out. 957 knows exactly how to make this crocodile work and the disengage is successful from WE. And that wasn't the best start for WE, but that is one massive crocodile running <laughs> yeah. around. And you don't really want the Weavers well to knock him into your AD carry, unfortunately. I believe BB dies as he was getting devoured by J2. Yeah. So there was no counterplay. There was no option for him to flash. J was just trying to help a mate and <laughs> ends up killing him. And it's the hard committals when you do see two items start to be completed on multiple carries. It's going to be something that J-Team wants to avoid. They actually did have the Hurricane Blade, the Rune King done first. Couldn't fight around. So we're going to see the replay here. RBB opens up really safely. The cask splitting both Condi and 957 means that Condi has to be the first one to go down. And certainly, you get to see all the interactions here. Really tragic, actually. Oh, Timing, wow. yeah, How exactly. Did that even... What? Just he as he was going into the map. He is still slightly targetable. 957 takes him out. Partially targeted. Just a little, just enough. When you're putting food <laughs> in your mouth, Atlas, it still can be knocked away. Ah, uh, that's true. We call it a smidgen targetable. <laughs> I like it. Mystic has got his uh, hurricane now, so that two item spike that we talk about all the time is going to be completed, and the second spike for the Corky is done. Third one's going to be that infinity edge, but man, he's spiky. And namely, <laughs> namely for Shie as well, he hasn't gone for the infinity edge, which is what we've seen from every single LPL Corky. He's changed up his build just a little bit, get that extra range and attack speed, because he doesn't want to be killed. He needs to try and distance himself. Callista is a closer range AD carrier. They need to stipend themselves just a little bit more. Yeah, and I believe that's the faker school of thought as well on the Corky, picking up the rapid fire cannon. Yeah, second. Infinity Edge second kind of weaves in and out in terms of popularity. Seeing a lot of attention here because, of course, the Infernal Drake has spawned. That yeah, was WE that picked up the mountain, remember, but J Team don't want to let this one go over. They have started. Watch for the Weaver's it. Wall. Yeah, Fofu yeah, has, has a lot lot of of So she's there. It's going to be secured. Yeah, that is. Another what oh, the Ash hell? That's going to be stolen with a volley. That is just ridiculous. Alex is going to get gobbled up and taken to safety. And J Team say thank you very much for the leash. Not entirely sure how you missed that, but we're, we'll take it anyway.
Yeah, the rend calculation was wrong. Connie smited early, and still the steel comes through. Sometimes it can be on the sliver. That was the sliver, and they had the the positioning on the mid lane wave as well. And J Team basically pick up the lunch money of WE and get an advantage that should never have been there. <laughs> yeah, they get the Infernal Drake and the tower at the same time. The mid lane out of falls, and now they immediately rotate. At least have pressure towards the top side of the map. Minion Sometimes it all well. comes together, Atlas. As oh, you say, yeah. the minion wave crash, and they can't walk up. They don't feel safe enough. We talked about Fofo. He's the guy we focused on with J-Team. Once again, five kills under his belt. Morning, he's uh, all alone. Yep, Condi's looking for him. Does get the flash kick. He's going to easily land the Q there, but Morning has to invest his flash this time and is once again going to be safe. And Condi all the way down towards the bottom side of the map. You can see the pings on the Baron. We'll see where the J-Team head over there. I just, someone really needs to give WE the uh, simple tutorial on Vision. We still have another <laughs> game, three in a row, that I want to say that it's Ben, right? I want to say that it's a, a factor of zero coming into the team, but this is not the WE we saw playing an MSI, even when a zero did sub in, you know, just a handful of times. Yeah. They have such big lapses, you wonder where their heads have been at recently because while well, they've made some adaptations in the draft, once again, the play patterns after a good early game, it must yeah. be said vision-wise, the moment anything seems to go against them, they fall back to just getting their item spikes and, and lose the vision game. I think it's fair to say in part it is that Zero is here. Of course, you don't lose the knowledge or the no. map awareness. You may lose how the meta changes and where objectives and priorities lie. You also can get a little bit complacent when you haven't been practicing here, there and everywhere. The arrow is hit. Speaking of complacency, that was going to be a delivered Braum into a Fates Call and Mystic's going to save him. But that means another initiation opportunity now gone for WE. Doesn't Trade really. of Ultramates. J-Team can push up Vision. They want to get a Teleport Ward for Morning because Flash is down after having to deal with the gank in bot lane. So anything to help him get into the back line will be big for J-Team's initiation. Yeah, Condi spotted on that ward. Understandable. J-Team do have a fair few of them. Moving them up towards the Baron Pit now. WE did have a lot around that Dragon to start things up and it's Horrible that it weren't able to get it. As Morning's going to die, Shio picks up that kill quite easily. Catch. And now the Abyssal Voyage is going to bring the first. rest of J Team down. BB, good flash actually Jay's gets into big. relative safety. And Jay says, no, 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 BB. Don't be going that aggressive. Yeah, they committed to a play after their top laner was dead. Still very killable, doesn't have the stone plate. Condi also nearby. All of WE actually rotated towards the bottom lane. So their play is for the inner turret. Compliments of a package from Shie. And You see pretty slow movements from Fofo and also Alex. They only now just come to stop the mini wave crashing in mid lane. So it just will be a turret and a kill over to WE. Good heads up play in that scenario. Read it well as Fofo was just clearing minions in the top lane. Well, speaking of clearing minions in the top lane, this turret is going to do a bit of that. Shia is going to head back to base and grab it. So good timing to get pressure on where they had pressure in those lanes. Now able to go back, buy a few items. That is going to be the Gargoyle Stoneplate done for 957. And very close to that Infinity Edge is Shia. Just needs the combined cost and that pickaxe. And that is the third spike done. Nice work from WE. Now they need to get out and get that vision set up around this barren area. 28 minutes into the game and They're it's been spotted it. Hasn't been by spotted, J remember. They did not get spotted on the Callista Sentinel. They need to get in. Yeah, Weaver's Wall is still available here for J-Team. They can buy time with that ultimate. It is going to get thrown down. Condi and Zero get themselves over to the side. And that means that J-Team are going to peel away. No, we got here in time. It wasn't a crazy amount of damage to take the Baron out just yet. They did get it to about half health. The Weaver's Wall, you're not going to use it early. Way too indicative that you're just doing the Baron, and they'll be able to wait it out or just get over it with the lease in with the wall. Uh, in saying that, they didn't get to block them off at all. They just walked through. So, oh, the play is entirely nullified by the side of J-Team. Like the idea, love that they're testing their limits, testing the waters to see how WE then respond. Yeah, they saw the fact that WE only had a couple of wards in their last couple of games, so... If you can try and get there, you may as well test it out. And of course, no harm, no foul. Not going to lose too much. Say okay. We're just all going to be back up very, very soon as well. They've got an Ash Arrow available from Bibi. Heading towards what looks like an Infinity Edge item number three. Does have a cheeky dagger there for some reason. Oh, is that the frustration dagger that could be a control <laughs> That is, That is certainly what it is, Atlas. Yep, and the old frustration you dagger. You do see Alex also, knowing who his carry is, he has the Knight's Vow set up onto Fofo, not onto the AD carry in this particular game. Could, of course, change that in the later parts of the game, but consistent damage is something Talia does so well. We remember the burst when you hit the seismic shove, but especially when you're not on worked ground with consistent damage, another person you can happily use a Knight's Vow damage reduction onto. So now that BB has the Infinity Edge, perhaps he'll change the focus 
W. Also e. sold his dagger. That's true. <laughs> Thank we, we feel good about that one. Not the Doran's Blade. Just hasn't quite <laughs> actually bought the control ward just yet. But three item spike is big deal. There's three for Mystic as well, but a Phantom Dancer is no infinity edge as far as that flat damage. They are going to be moving up. J-Team actually just positioning themselves very aggressively here against WE. Yeah, they certainly are, and they've had control around the Baron area for a decent amount of time. WE get in, then J-Team comes back and they clear it, and we rinse and repeat. So really, we're waiting for that one moment where WE say, well, we have to check, or J-Team say, we need three control wards in one bush because the bush is super safe, <laughs> and that's now going to be our death bush. I think we have one of those right now, Atlas. All right. Not entirely <laughs> sure what the old three wards in a brush really it's means. the safest bush in existence. Okay. I think one of them's at least been replaced now. You know what we do know is that BB didn't place one of those. Yeah, we definitely know yeah. that one. There's only two there now. So the double ward brush going to be safe for the moment, but Condi's going to see 60 gold in there and be like, oh, is that my birthday? There it is. Oh, look at that. Just money lined up. Not going to be protected, so that uh, ward brush is an old one. And while it's amusing, always see the double control ward in the brush, it also means there's less vision available for <laughs> yeah. J-Team to reset. And yeah. they probably have to re go for an extra recall just to once again follow those steps as Jay has to flash away. Arrow's going to be in response to B. He's maybe him maybe in. a little bit off as far as the decision making is concerned. Cataclysm comes down and this is a really disjointed fight. The stun on the morning is not going to be followed up as now Alex is turned up. Line. Yeah, Fofo just going to get turned on immediately though. Fate's call is going to knock him up and Fofo is eliminated. And that was so disjointed from J-Team. A little bit of a brain fade. And remember the team fighting phase was the one big question mark we had about J-Team why they really failed in translating the early game to mid game. Remember yesterday Atlas when we were casting the game against EDG, there was no team fighting phase. It was PV, it was ordered League of Legends. Here we see Talia not reading the situation, coming into the back line, the person with all the gold. Fate's call turned on instantly and they should lose Baron from this even though they have a couple of members walking out. And they're coming in to look for it still. Yeah, BB actually is just going to get knocked back with the package. Not going to get knocked oh up, but look God. at that. Just so much ground damage. Morning's going to die as well. The Baron's going to reset, but it's only I time. I don't think they can do it. Yeah, they definitely should back away now. Okay, Alex still taking some damage. Mystic's very, very healthy. That's not going to be enough. So WE, you're exactly right, are going to back away. Five. No, actually, they're going to commit to doing it. Condi might die still. Well, 957 at least has a full health bar, so that should be okay. Alex gets himself in there. He's now looking for a place to start this fight. He has fight. Flash, he has his ultimate, and he has Smite. He has a lot of health missing as well, though, because Shie does a heck of a lot of damage, and he's just going to body slam his way out, and the Baron is going to be taken for WE. Ultra Brute Force, but because they had the rend, they could have extra members walk up and try to disengage. They take the Baron, and the whole passage of play is regarding to the mid lane. Jay could have just gone out, flashed away. Everyone can disengage. First thought is to move up when Fofo's in top lane. The Gragas is doing blue buff. Why are we going aggressive? You can extend that to Morning. who may not be helping his teammates, but he certainly looked like it was the meme play there. And then Fofo's in the back line. When Fates call us up, when the flashes are still up, they turn onto him easily. Complete brain fade. Terrible team fright from the side of J-Team, but it's just not something they were forced to do yesterday, so they fall back to some of their unfortunate fallback tendencies in a very much more even game. It feels like the ants just marched in one by one, basically, and slowly <laughs> hurrah, went hurrah. down. Yeah. yeah, one of the teams said that for certain. Yeah, the hurrahs were not in favor of J-Team, though, most certainly. Lord Dominic's re regard has actually been picked up outright by Mystic as well after that first back. QSS and Azeal there for Shie, of course, staying with the theme of we don't want to buy control wards because, because we've got so much money, we may as well buy more items. And that is the same to be said for 957, who has a guardian angel towards the top side of the map. It's These huge. are big spikes for all of the players on WE, and now with the Baron buff, just marching these minions down the lanes. And the big difference between the teams is actually in top lane itemization between the Renekton and the Jarvan. Renekton actually has the tankiness, the Guardian Angel and the Gargo Stoneplate, whereas Morning is still desperate for the Gargo Stoneplate purchase. The reason why you say that is both teams are looking to fight front to back. The Kalissa just wants to be free hitting. Renekton can stand in front of the Ash, force her to disengage, whereas you can't say that about Jarvan out of anything other than creating terrain. And that should mean that a lot more orders will come in for Mystic and the team fight should go the way of WE. Well, there's just going to be a cask trying to disengage them off this turret. They have to wait for another minion wave to turn up, but that's an ultimate that's not going to be there to get them away from it next time. And a fairly important ultimate at that, just to not have available if WE still have the Baron buff. 
None of the damage dealers can take apart 957 with the items he has. And it's almost a disengage ultimate that's now completely missing. Tom Kench, now super crucial. Oh, Condi's actually looking for this cheeky play out for the backside. Actually safeguards his way over. That's There's a kick. The kick flash. And he's just not going to get deleted. out. Alex is going to get absolutely deleted. You're more than correct, Papa Smithy. And that's going to be Look that. Fofo. As she is Ooh. heading forward, it's going to be Mystic that takes down the, the end of the game, and Yeah, could be the end of the game, but it will definitely be the end of this inhibitor. WE will take that one down. Condi very low on health. He's just standing back as there's the exhaust onto Fofo. Takes so one much damage. Pick. The flash. That's oh. going to be it. Morning jumps in with the Cataclysm. But it's just a party as BB says, well, I guess I'm going to stand on my fountain and see whether they take down my Nexus. They're just going to wait for the minions to come in. This should be the end of the game. Only BB the veteran is here to stop off the glass. The LPL should be going 1-0 up. Well, Shea is going to do a lot of damage as he jumps in, but does have BB. to be careful. Yeah, BB's doing his very oh best. Shea well. falls down. One Nexus turret is going to fall. As 957 has a GA at least, so he's not going to die. That felt buys like, them uh, enough time. Felt like WE also felt the, the same tune that we were coming up with there, Rusty. They kind of went in one by one. They there certainly too. did. I don't think they had enough to end the game unless they immediately killed the Ash. Summoners were available, so BB holds the Nexus for his team. But you'd have to wonder for how much longer will they still have that Nexus available with the current state of the game. And you need your Nexus available. That's, you do. Uh, that's one of those that's things important. that you You've definitely need You've been reading your have. notes again, haven't I you, I know. Atlas? You called me a good analyst the other day, so I wanted to follow You've up been with more up. things I'm to know. You. Thanks very You'll need much, that one for the Smitty. LCK1 broadcast. Oh, will I? Yeah. I haven't needed it thus far. <laughs> Okay, Bibi's going to continue clearing things out. And Alex, towards the bottom side of the map, gets a coveted jungle camp that he's been pushed away from for the last little while. 9,000 gold is the lead for WE. They should be able to close this one out because you don't need vision if you're just playing in the enemy base. You have minions there, it's absolutely fine. You know where your enemy is too. That's certainly true, of course. The, the lack of Dorans being sold for the side of BB that we mentioned in the past. Oh, he actually bought back that dagger as well. Yeah, he did. Oh, dear. <laughs> now it's a rapid-fire cannon. I mean, you want to get hyped about the DPS items. That's, you know, that's just the mindset you have as a caster. That's a big Infinity Edge over there. But actually, the game is being decided in the tank itemization. Yeah. Condi and 957 are as steadfast as possible, basically unkillable, even to Ash, who has four items. But the same is not true on the side of J-Team. And the front-to-back fighting that both these teams set up for, you can tell by things like the Knight's Vow being completed, it's almost impossible for J-Team without a big pick. Yeah, and there isn't the uh, Last Whisper item coming in for BB yet either. You mentioned it was a Rapid Fire Cannon. Yes, he's got a lot of crit, but he needs to be hitting the squishies to be doing relevant damage. This front line's going to be even more unkillable. Yeah, same thing applies for the mid lane as well. No Void stuff to be seen. Honestly, I don't think anything touches 957's health bar. He is just far too unkillable. And if Condi, with his items that are kind of halfway between tankiness, especially with magic resistance, doesn't die, then no one does, because they're both in front. Yeah, I, maybe you power through the Randuin's Dead Man's Plate, Lee Sin with no armor penetration, but then the Renekton has a Guardian Angel and a lot of armor and health, so... And a weird cloak there as well in the Spectre's Cow. That's important. He just likes to look good. He does. And he definitely does. 957 actually been making some pretty sweet plays, especially around that mid-game. Somehow being able to kill an Ash mid-Devourer is cool. So WE probably, you know, felt the 32-minute victory. That part's now gone. A minute and a half till Baron and Elder are both up. Yep. Maybe, just maybe, J-Team Stinker Ward into one. They're certainly not going to get to both. So WE, the percentage play, just hold back, put down a couple of control wards. They got a few in the inventory and just set up for objectives that J-Team are going to have to heavily overextend just to contest. And you'd feel like with order of priority here as well, with both major objectives spawning at the exact same time, you'd still be looking towards the Baron because that then you can just corral the minions in as they assist you in ending the game. Yes, the Elder Dragon's great for team fighting, and if J-Team don't take one of them or fight for one of them, you just go from one to two and end. And I feel like WE have shown in their ward line that they do agree with you. They have two wards on the obvious entrances through the blue buff, to the Baron pit to spot a contest. So they clearly are priming themselves for the Baron. You know, we, we run them down when the warding isn't there. We have to give them credit where credit is due. I feel like both teams have kind of had the same fallback tendencies. J-Team's mid-game team fighting and WE's war control have both been relevant. WE have largely stuck that landing, and that's why they find themselves primed to take the first victory. Yeah, and all of these wards are getting cleared out as well on the side of J-Team. The map is getting darker and darker, gentlemen. Now moving towards where that Elder Drake is. I like setting up vision and then taking the other buff because you can utilize yourself as war. I mean, Callista might just solo it. Hey, that's true. She's looking for it, that's for certain. It's going to get mad at her. And yeah, Mystic going to stick some sticks See, in the big See, there's some things on the blue side. They could at least try contesting vision. 
Daytime need to make a decision and make it soon. They don't see Lee Sin, who doesn't need to show himself. They have to look for something. You can see them moving. If they don't fight now, they just lose the game Agreed. by the two oh, buffs. BB's just taking so much damage. No arrow is going to connect. The Zero's there with the Unbreakable. And all too easily, the Elder Drake is going to be taken by WE. You feel like rinse and repeat. Head towards the Baron buff with double Mountain Drake Elder and just evaporated in a couple of hits. And then the game's over. Yeah, the damage from Elder just makes your Baron take with two Mountain Mountain Drake yeah. so much faster. You saw already a defensive flash from Agragas, a heal from an Ash. There's no world where they actually walk up and contest the Baron. Yep, W get both. Is, Is that a Baron or a Gromp, gentlemen? It feels like a Gromp, I'll say that much, but the Purple Worm just completely shredded. And now, J-Team are pretty much in their own version of hell because there's nothing that they can do besides fight immediately. Would you or say they're up a dirty creek without game. a paddle? I mean, you could say that, Atlas. That is definitely accurate. I mean, we I think they're only making a temporary <laughs> visit to hell because the fight won't be long enough for them to burn and rot there. They will die instantly to all the damage coming through from the side of WE. They're going to push up their waves. That's apparently part of the checklist that they yep. learned earlier today. But they are <laughs> so primed to finish this game. It's unfathomable that they don't win from here. Oh, that's always a dangerous thing to say, Papa Smithy, but I, I think you're fathom right. It at all, Atlas. <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> no fathoms left nope. this time around. Well, J Team is still trying their best to try and push things out. At least their inhibitor has respawned. Here's the but death now push. they're setting up the death push. Oh, that seismic shelf was close. Not going to be able to scoop to whoop the guy back in. I'm glad you used that one. Yeah, I've been waiting earlier. for an opportunity. Yeah. yeah. I have to admit, I don't really like it when you prepare one, but uh, that one, we had a discussion and needed to make it happen. I like how we analysts prepare stats and you come up with silly names for abilities. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> I don't actually do it beforehand most of the time. The best ones are the ones that you say halfway into a team fight or something like that. When you've been, you know, piercingly lit and stuff like that. I feel like we might get a lit team fight in just a few seconds. Oh, I'm excited six for segue. it. Do just come have on, a siege on the turret. Start initiating, we're ready. Well, they've got the free inhibitor to take top lane. I think they just wanted two waves of minions crashing at once. This is the inhib they can fight for. It's also the inhib Fofo said we're probably going to fight for. Yep, Weave as well is going to come in as now Condi's actually going for a fight, loses half of his health bar and he's knocked back. Condi gets a shield and he's going to survive for the moment. Good devour. Gets BB out of there, but 957, you mentioned Unkillable. Go Fofo. And it looks exactly like that. Alex is eliminated. Fofo somehow died off to the side there as oh, BB. Oh, oh, what was that? Here comes the big one, ready? Okay, Shie, that's Aww. a lot of damage, buddy, as BB makes it back to the fountain, but that's not where he wants to be because the Nexus is being focused. WE are going to get the redemption here against the J team and against the LMS after yesterday and bring at least themselves to one and two so far this tournament. And the LPL bring themselves up in this best of five to one and zero Atlas. They've actually got some redemption here for at least WE, potentially for the whole region. And 